So what is going on everybody? Fernando Silva here with another video. And in today's video, what I wanted to talk about was all the widgets that I've been using with iPadOS 15 and above. Because Apple with iPadOS 15, they finally allowed us to move widgets from that today view section that again, I still miss. I love that today view section, being able to pin that there and have my widgets there at all times. Used to absolutely love it. So I hope that Apple at some point brings that back but they did get rid of the today view and now they allowed us to customize our screen to a certain extent. We still gotta follow that grid layout, which I, again, I hope Apple unlocks, but we are able to put widgets of all different sizes from all these different third-party applications and native applications onto our home screen or whatever screen we wanna show it on. So without further ado, we're gonna go through all the main widgets that I use and what their auxiliary app is and how often I use those apps as well. But without further ado, let's get into it and comment down below some of your favorite widgets and maybe take a guess as to which ones I use if you guys have been following me for a while. Let me know what you think. But again, let me know also in the comments which widgets you use and what you use them for. Always curious to know. But let's get into it. So let's hop right into this video, everybody. We're going to pull up the iPad over here just to show you guys a screen recording of exactly what we're talking about. And we're gonna follow the grid layout that Apple has given us for years and years. We're gonna start from the top left and move our way all the way to the bottom right. We're gonna talk about the applications that are behind these widgets and talk about how I use them and why they're on there. But the first one we're gonna talk about is the sub widget. So very self-explanatory. If you're not a YouTuber, then you probably don't really care too much about this one. I'd just like to see exactly how many subscribers I have at one time with this widget. And what I like about this widget is that it's not super granular, meaning that it doesn't give you a number by number kind of update to the widget counter. It does it by increments and intervals of 100. So in order to get that 37,100, I need to be at exactly 37,100 or higher for that to show up. So it's not like I'm always looking at it and always checking to see what my count is at from a single number or a single digit perspective. But this just gives me a nice little at a glance view of how we're doing on the channel from a subscriber count standpoint. So. 37,100 subscribers plus. So thank you to everybody that's been watching these videos and following along for this long. Big shout out to you guys. But as you can see with the actual widget application itself, you don't have a landscape view, so it's gonna look a little weird with the screen recording, but you do have the ability to customize it as much as you want. So you can so you can search by channel ID or name. So if I wanna put like MKBHDs on here, and if I really wanted to do that, I probably could, but I don't wanna do that. But you can also change the background color of the actual widget itself. So if I wanted to make it white or like this pink color or white, leave it there. So now it's in that white color, and if I leave the application, it does turn white. So you can see that now I have that white widget counter, which I'm gonna change back in a second. And then the last thing that it does show you is that you do get a preview of medium and small. So it does come in two different widget sizes, which is great to see. And actually, before we continue, let's actually talk about how to add these widgets. So the first thing that you're gonna to wanna to do is long press anywhere on the screen. If you long press and you go into that wiggle mode that Apple is touted for, you have that top left button, which allows you to add the widget. So you press that plus sign right there, and then you're greeted with a few things. You're greeted with a list on the left-hand side for all the applications that are widget ready and that have at least one type of widget to share. And then on the right-hand side, it shows you all the widgets that you might actually wanna add in those sizes, right? So if I, let's say if I wanna add something from the App Store, click on the App Store, I get three different views here. So I have a small, medium, and large. And with iPadOS, you actually have the ability to add extra large ones. So for the files, you have the medium, you have the large, and then you have the extra large one for the iPad Pro or for any iPad on iPadOS 15 and later. So that is how you add widgets. And all you have to do is press add widget. It shows up, there it is. I'm gonna delete it so everything goes back to how it was. And all you have to do is press done on the top right or just swipe up on your device in order to get going back to exactly where you were and get rid of that wiggle mode. And now we're gonna to move to the right of the actual sub widget counter. And the next one we have is actually by a company called Public. So Public is the application that I use to invest in regular stocks. So company stocks, pretty much anything that you could think of is on here. And this just gives you an at a glance view of how you're doing for that 24 hour period or that open to close period from 9.30 to 4.30 p.m. Eastern time. But again, this is non-interactive. So if you click on it, it does open up the actual application. So let it do its thing, let it load up. And then you can see that this is the application that you're greeted with, which is public.com. Highly, highly recommend this one if you guys are new to retail investing and wanna try it out. I'm gonna link it down below if you guys do wanna try it. But this just gives you at a glance at what your top three movers or the most positive mover that you had for that day. So you can see Coinbase is up, ACB, which is a cannabis-based company is up, and then also Cloudflare also up, love to see it. And if we continue to the right, we actually have the same thing, but now for crypto. So from a crypto standpoint, I use Coinbase. Again, it gives you your top three assets that you're invested in. So Algo, BAT, and Sheeb. Obviously you gotta represent the Sheeb because I got Archie here at all times, which is my dog, if you guys follow along. But that is the widget that I use. And again, if you do open it up, 
it does take you to Coinbase. The one thing with Coinbase is that Coinbase does not have an iPad centric application. It's still just the iOS version. So I never use the application itself. I just use the widget. If I ever want to do any investing, I either do it on my phone or I go to Safari and log into Coinbase with my iPad Pro and get it done that way. So if we continue with this grid layout, we're gonna go back to underneath the sub widget and this one's an interesting one. So I'm gonna show you guys how to create a smart stack next. Cause as you can see, we have my authenticator widget right here, which is constantly rotating through a six digit verification code for each one of these applications. But if I swipe down, then I actually have my Google calendar. So the way that this is done is if you hold down, you can actually have the ability to edit this stack, but I'm gonna go to edit home screen cause that's what you normally see. And then you can see that there's a couple dots on the right hand side of these widgets. Actually, the sub widget also had a sub stack in there or a widget stack in there, but we're going to talk about that one a little bit later. But here you can see that I actually have two. So if I tap on here, we now get the little carousel and we can add as many as we want into this smart stack. And then there's two options in that smart stack that you can click on. So you have the smart rotate, which ideally rotates the widget depending on when iPad OS thinks you're going to want to view that content. And then we also have widget suggestions. So what that means is that it actually suggests actual widgets, mostly native widgets that are used within iPadOS, but it'll actually kind of put widgets in there that you personally didn't decide to put in there. So I leave that turned off, but I do leave Smart Rotate on because it kind of knows me better than I know myself. So it'll know when I'm trying to authenticate and get into an application, but it'll also know when sometimes when I have something coming up on my calendar that it needs to show me. So that is how you do Smart Stack. And again, you can add as many as you want into here. But let's get out of there. And again, this one we have right here is called the Authenticator app. Very self-explanatory. You just create an account, you log in, you start scanning QR codes to then sync your accounts in there. And then you're given that two-factor authentication right up in there. So Authenticator app, I'm gonna leave it down in the description if you guys do wanna check it out. Absolutely amazing. And then underneath that, in that smart stack, is this my Google Calendar. It's a calendar that I use for work purposes mostly. And that's what I got going on right there. So we do have a meeting later on today, which should be fun to have. The next widget we're going to talk about is actually by Spike Mail. So Spike Mail has been my mail client of choice for, I want to say, a little over a year now at this point. And I actually moved from Spark Mail over to Spike. I know the names are very, very similar, but I still really like Spark. I just haven't used it in a really long time. I liked it when I was using it. But the reason I went with Spike is because of the conversational aspect of the actual messaging. So if I click on here, it'll actually go to the one that you're using. And you can see that they're all very kind of chat based. So if I go into any conversation that I'm having. Let's go right here. You can see that it looks like a chat is happening right now versus an email chain. And I love this aspect because it takes away some of the formalities of email. And everybody knows if you're trying to write a business email, you I feel like you have to check it 18 million times because it's supposed to be something formal that's being sent out. But in reality, email is just a way of, of communicating. So as long as the other person they are reaching out to is aware of the way you're communicating, then I absolutely love Spike. And again, if you are using Spike Mail yourself, but you're sending it to somebody who doesn't use Spike, it's gonna show up like a normal email. You can still put your signature in there. You can still have it autofill things. So Spike Mail has been absolutely awesome and kind of, or for breaking down that wall and making it seem like email needs to be super formal. And now I just treat email as if it's a, just another iMessage or something on Facebook or whatever the case may be. That is what it feels like now and I absolutely love it. So honestly, Taskade should be coming soon with an iPad app. So be on the lookout for that because I've been waiting so, so long for an iPad app for Taskade. But that is Spike Mail, and they did add a couple other features like note taking. So you have the ability to create a note, create a task, you can collaborate in real time. So they're taking some of that Google collaboration feature into this app. I mostly use it for email. Every now and then I use it to co collaborate on some notes with people that are also on Spike Mail. But you don't need to be on Spike Mail to collaborate, and Spike Mail is 100% free. So if you guys want to check it out, by all means, Spike Mail has been absolutely amazing. And if we continue on to the right of the Spike Mail widget, we actually have one that looks a little bit different. As you can see, we have a plus sign and a heart sign. And what this is, is a habit tracker. So it's just a way for you to calculate and be able to continue your streaks in real time without really thinking about it. So I have something in here, which basically reminds me to brush my teeth, to call my parents a few times a week, and every single time I do that. So for brushing my teeth, I brush my teeth this morning. And if I wanna brush my teeth at night, once I'm done with that, I'll just press this plus sign, it'll be completed. And you can see that the widget completes itself right there. Same thing with this one. So this one, I have a three times a week counter to call my parents, make sure that they know I love them and things like that. So click on that, press plus plus. So done for the week, which isn't true. I'll go back and change it, but very, very simple. Nothing you really you can do with the actual widget itself besides just a visualization of, hey, make sure to get your streak done for that day. So this is great if you have different habits that you wanna do. Like let's say you wanna make it a habit to go on a run every day or work out every day or maybe read for 30 minutes every day or make sure you check the news for five minutes every day. This is the best way to kind of make sure you keep that habit. 
So again, that application is called Habits and it's completely free. The next one I have is actually by a company called Weatherline. Unfortunately, if you guys have followed the channel, Weatherline is no longer in the App Store. They were purchased by another company, but their app still works. So if you still have Weatherline, it'll still work. I think it works up until the end of next year. So we'll see what happens when they turn it off, if it's even gonna exist anymore. But for now, it has been my favorite widget of choice just because of the way it's laid out. Absolutely love it, that's Weatherline. And then the last two that we have in the bottom, this big one is actually the native files application. So here we have the XL files widget, which I like to have on my home screen to see what my most recently files that were added to my files are. So here where you have the ability to actually choose whatever folder you want for this XL widget. So what I have is my most recently added in terms of what the location is, but you can go in here and change it to whatever you want to change it. So if you have a folder that has maybe all your YouTube thumbnails or a folder that has all the videos that you want to watch at a glance, you can be more than happy to actually put this on here. So what I'm waiting for is the day that I actually grab one of these files and move it on here and then the actual home screen treats each file like an icon or an application that I can just have on my home screen if I ever need a document that I'm always using. But for now, this is the best case scenario where you just have the actual files widget here ready to go with whatever files you need at a glance. So again, and these are all clickable. So if I click on it, it takes me right to the preview. These are all these different thumbnails that I've been using lately, which are all good to go. But overall, really like the functionality of the files widget. Just wish that we can put actual individual files onto the home screen, which hopefully we might see with iPad OS 16. And then the last one is actually my budget tracker. So this is by a company called Mint. So Mint.com has been around for years and years and years. I remember using it in like 2010 or 2012, way back in the day. But basically it's just a budget tracker and a way to aggregate all of your different financials into one application. So you can put in, you know, your income from your job, you know, YouTube income, you can put all your debts in there like student loans, any mortgages that you have. You can put your assets in there like your house and your car, your lease payments, whatever the case may be, you can even sync it with public.com. So all of your investments, your 401k, it basically aggregates all that data and gives you your overall net worth. So that is great to see, no matter how good or bad the net worth number is, it's always great to know exactly where you are. So you have a level playing field and you have an idea of where you wanna go next. But the widget that I use for Mint is actually the budget one, because not only does it aggregate all that data, but then you can also track all your transactions and then set budgets depending on what categories you want. So you have your overall budget on the top and then your top monthly budgets in terms of spend. So I have a budget for like my rent, I have a budget for groceries, budget for how much gas to spend each month, budget for entertainment stuff, budget for our subscription services, and whatever the, whatever else we're spending money on is gonna be budgeted within mint.com. And this application and this widget, this gives me all that information at a glance. So whenever that gets a little too close to that budget or whenever it exceeds the budget for the month, it'll actually turn everything red to let you know like, hey, you better slow down on your spending. We're not even halfway through December and you already crossed your budget. But that's pretty much all the different widgets that we're using on iPadOS 15.2 beta 4. So I'm also on the beta program and this is very, very stable. So highly recommend checking out these widgets. Leave some comments down below of the widgets that you use and I'll also be linking all these widgets down below. But let's get out of this view and go to the normal one. So that's pretty much gonna do it for this video, everybody. Hopefully you guys were able to take some of these widgets and learn something new. Maybe I give you guys some ideas as to what widgets to add to your home screens, either on your iPad or your iPhone as well, because a lot of these work for the iPhone, except for those extra large widgets, which are made specifically for iPad OS and these iPads from the Pro all the way down to the ninth generation iPad. And as you probably realize, most of these widgets are for at a glance use. None of it is really functional. It's all for kind of data that I wanna see that I need to see at a glance whenever I'm going throughout my day. So those are what those widgets are for. And I really want Apple and third-party applications to use widgets as more of a functional kind of situation, as more of a functional situation for widgets as opposed to those at a glance things where you can't really interact with the widget too, too much. But again, that's what we have so far for my widgets on my home screen. And probably my favorite one, if I were to name one of them, would probably have to be the Mint one. I love the Mint one just because of all the customization that it has, and also the information that it does give you and the importance of that information for me specifically. But all in all, all the widgets that I mentioned, I've been testing them for a while. They work extremely well and I absolutely love them. They're all gonna be linked down in the description below if you guys do wanna check them out. But that's gonna do it for this video. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, comment down below your favorite widget from this lineup that I mentioned. And until next time, peace.